Hello and welcome. My name is Emanuel Ziegler from the Google WebAssembly Runtime team in Munich, and I want to show you how you can bring your C or C++ code directly into the browser using WebAssembly and the Emscripten toolchain. Our team here at Google works on the V8 JavaScript engine, used in the Google Chrome browser, the Chromium project, Microsoft Edge, and Node.js. WebAssembly now allows you to use other languages besides JavaScript. Mscripten is an open source C, C++ toolchain based on the Clang compiler toolchain with WebAssembly specific extensions. You can port legacy code like third party libraries or even full applications to the web. You might also choose to write new code in C or C++ whenever performance matters. WebAssembly, or WASM in short, is a technology that allows you to execute binary code directly in your browser, and all of that in a secure and fast manner. It is based on a low-level stack machine into which your program code can be translated. It succeeds similar technologies like the native client or SMJS and is endorsed by the W3C as an official web standard just like HTML, CSS and JavaScript. It is supported by all major browsers on both desktop and mobile devices. Mscripten works as an easy drop-in replacement for your compiler toolchain. It usually creates two files, one containing the WebAssembly binary and the other one containing JavaScript code that makes it more convenient to work with. The browser engine will then usually transform both modules into machine code using a just-in-time compiler. If you want to compile your application for WebAssembly, you need to install the Mscripten toolchain first. You can simply download it from GitHub using git clone or download a snapshot of it. The actual toolchain is installed and activated using the emsdk command. You can provide a specific version or just choose to install the latest version. It also comes with some helper scripts for common shells that set up the environment. This will add commands to the path and set required environment variables. After mscripten is installed, you can compile your program by simply replacing the C compiler by emcc and a C++ compiler by em++. You will want to choose a .js ending for your files, and a .wasm file will be automatically created alongside. You will likely want to add some WASM-specific parameters as well that allow you to export functions to JavaScript and make it easier to consume them. In this example, I assumed a simple Hello World program that has one function, hello, which we want to call. Note that I have added an underscore before the function name for technical reasons. We also want to use the ccall function provided by mscripten to call this function later. If you have a more complex project, you might want to use the emcmake and emmake commands that you can simply prefix to cmake and make respectively. It will ensure that the mscripten compiler is used for building your project and everything is properly set up. Similar commands also exist for non-cmake based projects that use a configure command. The recommended way of integrating a bare compiled module into your web application is to use the streaming interface. This allows the browser to decode and compile the module already while it's loading in the background. Simply pass the fetch promise for the WASM file to the instantiate streaming method. You will receive a promise in return, which is resolved once the module is instantiated and ready to be used. Bare WASM modules do not offer the same level of comfort as mscripten modules, which were compiled with JavaScript output too. For now, WebAssembly only supports elementary data types, and complex parameters like strings are hard to transform to that. I therefore recommend to also create a JavaScript module in Mscripten as shown earlier. If you want to load a module that was compiled with Mscripten, you just need to load the JavaScript file, which will trigger all necessary WebAssembly actions. When using the experimental modularize option, it can be loaded like a regular ECMAScript module, returning a promise to an instantiation function. This function will return a promise to an instance very similarly to the WebAssembly instantiate streaming function that we have seen on the last slide. You can pass configuration options like an implementation of the print function here that tells the browser what should happen if your program writes to standard out. You can see that here we are using the ccall function, which can handle string arguments too. We need to provide the signature of the function so ccall knows how to do this translation. The hello function accepts one string parameter and does not return anything. We want to pass the parameter value world, which is the last argument provided. Mscripten supports most of the standard command line parameters of common C and C++ compilers like minus O with several optimization levels and specific optimizations for size, which can be very useful if bandwidth is an issue. 
But it also provides options specific for WebAssembly. For example, minus minus closure, which allows running the closure compiler on the generated JavaScript code for additional performance and size optimizations. Mscripten also supports generating debugging information, which can be used in the upcoming Chrome DevTools support for seamless debugging and profiling of JavaScript and C++ code. It can also help you in interacting with JavaScript, either by making it easier to call WebAssembly code from JavaScript using C call and C rep, as shown earlier, or for calling JavaScript directly from within your C++ code. For this, mbind, the web IDL binder, and emgs macros are available. If you're working with files, you can get a POSIX file system emulation that allows you to create, read, and write files in a memory file system or a sandbox persisted file system. If you are working with asynchronous JavaScript, you might want to check out the Asyncify feature that allows you to call asynchronous code from C++. So how does this work behind the scenes? In V8, we work with a two-tier compilation strategy. Other engines work in a similar manner. We start with a streaming compiler called Liftoff. This will compile all functions while they are loading and is designed to be as fast as possible. Under normal circumstances, it will be faster than the data is transferred. So when the transfer of the module is complete, the module is ready almost right away. This reduces startup time to a minimum. We also use it for debugging because the code emitted is very similar to the WebAssembly binary code. The next compile step has already been triggered in the background. It uses our optimizing compiler TurboFan. This is the same compiler that is also used for the top tier in JavaScript. It produces about twice as fast and more compact code. Function after function will eventually be replaced by their high-performance instances, and after a few seconds, the application will run at full speed. WebAssembly also has a lot of features to offer. Some of them were already part of its initial release. Others are still being developed and standardized. This is a selection of features that are currently in the works. Multithreading is already available for testing and allows you to parallelize your application using well-known thread implementations like pthreads or C++ threads. SIMD allows vectorization of code for multimedia or other high-performance applications and is also available for testing if you're interested. The exception handling proposal will simplify how C++ and JavaScript exceptions behave in WebAssembly. If your application is very resource-hungry, Memory64 will allow for more than 4 GB of RAM to be allocated. Remember the SQL function we used earlier? The interface types proposal is aiming at simplifying how different languages with different data types interact with each other. It will make it easier to exchange strings and arrays and call WebAssembly functions directly. The C API allows you to have your personal WebAssembly engine included in your own application. This way, you could, for example, have a plugin system that is based on WebAssembly and be sure it will not interfere with your application in unintended ways. And finally, we are also working on garbage collection support to allow other languages to run on WebAssembly without the need for shipping a heavy virtual machine with it. If you are interested in these or other upcoming features, you can go to WebAssembly.org or the WebAssembly GitHub page for more information. Finally, I want to use the opportunity to bring some related projects to your attention. We will have WebAssembly debugging support for C++ applications, which is already available for testing. You might also want to check out progressive web apps that allow your applications to run offline just like a native application and be installed right from your website. Talking about native applications, Project Fugu offers a bunch of capabilities as web APIs in a secure way which are normally only available to true native applications. One of these capabilities is the ability to store data to the hard disk across sessions for caching, configuration data, etc. This currently runs under the preliminary name Native.io due to its near-native performance, but it will be rebranded soon. So I hope I could get you excited about all these new abilities, and if you want to see how WebAssembly feels in a real application, check out the super smooth web version of Google Earth. If you have any questions or would like to get engaged in the WebAssembly community, just let me know. Thank you and have a great day.